friends. Welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 62. Today is Friday, November 4th, 2022. I'm Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Thank you for joining me today. As you can see over my back shoulder, it's a gorgeous autumn day. It's around 72 degrees or so. It couldn't be more perfect. It's really the weather I like best. It's the weather that summer should be. But of course, I live in North Carolina, so it isn't. Um, floss tube means cross stitch. Variety show means something else. Whatever else it turns out to be. So we'll, we'll discover that together in a little, little while. Cross stitch first though. Uh, this is sampler 193 by 2x2 two two Stitch Art. Um, it is a, uh, she is a Ukrainian cross stitch designer. And I have made some progress. I'm up to the corner there. So as you can see, let me just drop this a little bit because you can see that center medallion. I'm really just over an eighth done with this. I've made it to the top. I've made it to the left-hand corner. And that's exciting. This is 16-count um, white Ada by Zweigart, and the thread is 777, which is a DMC red color. It's very fun to work on. In fact, once I get started working on that, it's hard to put it down because it's very straightforward. It's not too, um, the counting is not difficult and there's only one color. That's really something. So I often show this, you now know what's about, you, those of you who've watched these videos before know what's about to be shown, but I often show this book, the Ultimate Sampler Source Book, Sampler Motif Source Book by Brenda Keys, which is a collection of things that she has found from on samplers. And so I'm showing the purple sampler. Um, I'll start from the top. You've seen all this before. Um, I can't remember exactly where I left off at the bottom and I'll come back to that central box in a moment, but I think, I think maybe I didn't have the alphabet finished down there. I can't remember. And the, um, I added two little motifs, the sailboat and the bird. The sailboat and the bird mean nothing. They're just little interesting space fillers. But up here, I put some water under the loon and I put in a really nice tree that I found in that sampler motifs book. And I will probably put in a couple little birds or something up there too, or little uh, blackbird design style space fillers. So I have this, whoops, where am I? Here I am. It's very odd because in the um, phone, if you've done a video, you know, but in the phone, it's backwards. So I look at this and think, oh my goodness, am I showing the back? No. Uh, so I have that little curvy border under there. And I'm debating. It needs to be at least five inches longer. So five inches is five times 18 is 95 stitches, right? 90 stitches, 90 stitches, 90 stitches. Um, so that could be made up of some nice borders. It could be made up of um, a few motifs and some nice borders. Or I could go more than five inches and include another, say, three inch high band of motifs, which would include some traditional sampler items. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do. There are so many things in that Brenda Keys book that I would like to stitch, but they don't all have to go in this sampler. And I, the um, dimensions that I was asked to aim for were four and a half inches at the maximum wide and that is what this is. And I think 34 or so inches maximum tall. Um, 
this right now is just about 20 inches. So if I went five more, I'd be, I think the minimum was 24 inches. So if I went five more inches, I would be hitting the minimum roughly. And if I went more than that, I would be hitting the midpoint between the minimum and the maximum. So somewhere in there is what it'll be. I will say that I'm highly motivated to finish it by the end of November because of the um, Modern Folk Embroidery Advent stitch that starts December 1st, which I showed you a few weeks ago. I showed you that the box of all those things had come, you know, the little envelopes that were to be opened day by day and something to stitch. I have been very obedient and I have not further opened that. So, good for me. Um, anyway, another thing to show you that I've been working on, this is Snippet Tiger Stare by Charting Creations. And I'm doing this on 18 count sand colored Ada by Zweigart. And I have made more progress. And I'll tell you, yesterday I thought I was gonna make a lot of progress stitching because I thought I would stitch all the way down to the bottom there on that, I'll call it the white stripe. It does become whitish when it gets to the bottom. But I decided instead to finish putting together all the threads that I need for it because having to root around for threads, it slows me down. It makes it less appealing to pull it out when I have a hankering to work on it. Then I think, oh, I'm gonna have to go and get my boxes out again and figure out if I have that thread. And if I don't, if I need to put the new skein of it that I bought on a bobbin and all of that. So I just decided I'm gonna spend time doing that. I did that yesterday while watching some floss tubes because one does. And I'm thankful that you do, because here you are watching me. Um, so I wanted to give you an update on Winter Rose Manor. Uh, let me pull this carefully out. This is the chart. This was released in 2018, maybe, and um, a lot of people have stitched it and I've seen it on Instagram and I really like it and I'm going to stitch it. <clears throat> My plan is to start it January 1st. I should say not before January 1st. And the thing that the last time I mentioned it, I was waiting for a few threads that were hard to get some places, although maybe I had them by then. And the, the um, linen, because I decided to do this as designed, which usually I do it, I do something like this with the DMC conversion and I choose a fabric that I have or can easily get. Well, this time I did it, I did the, uh, took the effort, I'm trying to figure out one of the reasons this is delayed and I'm showing this to you is because I wanna show you the linen. So I ended up having to get a half yard of this and it is beautiful, it is a beautiful color. I can picture using this, so I'm glad I have a half yard. This is 36 count Brenda's Brew, and it comes nicely packaged from Hobby House Needleworks. It's by R&R &R Reproductions, a fat half. Very nice. And you know, actually, I don't know if it's a fat half. I guess it is. I guess it is, but here, are the threads against it. And this is the thing that makes it worth doing it the way the designer intended, is that the threads all look beautiful on that fabric, which is not has not been the case necessarily in some of the choices that I've made. That's a beautiful red. And I'll say that sometimes I look at these and think, think that isn't a beautiful red, but when you have it in the grouping, and with the fabric, I think, well, it is beautiful. And I'm sorry, the light is kind of weird. That's, that's kind of what it is. I don't have natural light uh, facing me at this location, so you just have to take my word for it. And if you've seen this stitch, which 
probably you have. I, you don't need to rely on my picture. But I did one, I don't think I've showed this before. Maybe I did. This is a project bag made by Karen Kirk of Fox and Rabbit Designs. Um, it's quite nice. I like the fabric. It's simple envelope bag and this little magnet closure is hand stitched on there. And I've decided that this Winter Rose Manor will go perfectly in this bag. And so I'm going to do that. Now, I forgot to bring in something else I wanted to show, but I'll show it next week because it's more pertinent next week. Um, if you watch other floss tubes, you will know that the collecting of these fabric design um, project bags is a thing, a major thing. For some people, it's just as much fun, I think, as doing the cross stitch that's stored within them. Uh, now, I happen to like this kind of bag quite a lot. This is just a simple, it's a heavy duty vinyl bag. It has some sort of reinforcement in there with a zipper, very inexpensive. You can, it's translucent, so you can remember which project is in there. I have it in many sizes um, because they're so inexpensive. I bought a lot in different sizes to see what were best. That's what I mostly use. But I've gotten slightly into the project bag thing because my friend Leslie, with whom I'm going to the Great British Sampler Weekend next year, made me one of those vinyl front project bags, which are very popular, and gave it to me for Christmas last year, which I love it. And since I got that one, I've gradually gotten interested in the more beautiful, less functional, well, it's still functional, but it's beautiful and functional instead of merely functional project bag. And so I did it. This just caught my eye because of the looms on it. Isn't that dramatic? The fabric was designed by a First People, First Nations um, artist in Canada. And I'm sorry, I don't know the name of that person. And the project bag was made by Caroline of Evertote. And her floss tube is called Off the Grid Needle Arts. And she is the one that sort of pulled together this Advent sampler stitching that includes Jacob of Modern Folk and Embroidery, Leo and Roxy threads and fabric, I think. And, um, yeah, that. That I mentioned just a moment ago that I showed you the box a few weeks ago that gets to, I get to start doing it on December 1st. So I was on the website and I just had to have this because the loon is one of my favorite birds. And I've told you the story of my conversation with a loon when we were camping at Algonquin Park. It also comes with this little notions case. And so a couple things I really like about this is that the lining of it is white. And the reason that that's nice is because if you've ever had, which I don't carry a purse, but if you're a female and you carry a purse or you're anybody and you have a backpack, if the inside of that backpack is black or the purse, you can tell I'm more into backpacks. It's challenging sometimes to find something at the bottom of it. And the little notions case is also, and it's um, it has batting in it. You know, it's very nice. I mean, it's a sealed up lining. There's no seams. It's very well made by Caroline of Evertote. Um, and it came packaged in tissue paper with a ribbon and this little tag and this little, I don't know if you can see that, this little charm, which I have never been one to collect those either. Though I have some sterling silver charms back from my childhood, which I should pull those out and probably have to polish them. But it's just a little feather, which is appropriate for the loon. 
So some people put these charms on the um, zipper pull of a bag like that. I might do that. It's a little, what are these called? Claw, lobster claw type clasp. And the tag is cut from scrap paper of some sort, which I love. I have a little tag cutter like that that I have um, cut smaller tags. I may have to look into getting a bigger one out of Christmas cards and use those for different little reasons. You might have to tag something. So that, that was fun to receive that. Uh, so that is what I wanted to talk about with regard to cross stitch today. I did not, as you notice, show you under the roof of blue Ionian weather. I think that if I were showing it every other video, then this would be the one. But, and I've worked on it, but I don't, you know, it's so, I just don't want to show it every, even apparently every other week because there's not enough difference. So maybe next week I'll show it to you. Um, I also didn't show you Eliza Stringer, age six, which I haven't worked anymore on. And I did not show you the Blackbird um, piece that I'm going to work on this weekend because this is the first weekend of the month, which has been designated by some of us as, well, it started with um, Brenda and Laura of Brenda and the Serial Starter Floss Tube first weekend of the month as the BBD Weekend Sal, Blackbird Designs Weekend Stitch Along. And I've been participating in that most first weekends for a while. So next week I'll show you that. And that is housed, my Blackbird projects are housed in the project bag I mentioned before, the one that started me on this. Well, actually, Leslie gave me another project bag, which is, I think of more as a knitting style project bag, so I have some yarn, a yarn project in it. Yes, Leslie, see what you did? She does watch these videos, so. <laughs> um, okay, but what is the variety show today? Uh, you may have noticed that I love games. And in my, in the, it used to be that when people came to my house, they would know that they were gonna play a game they've never played before because that's what I do. But it used to be before that era of me collecting games, collecting games, I don't know if that's fair to say, but um, it used to be that we played a lot, the same game a lot. And one of the games we wore out years ago was this game, Adel Verflichtet. Um, now, Adelverflichtet is a German phrase that means noblesse oblige, which is a French phrase that means the nobility, the uh, wealthy are required to support the poor, basically. I mean, that's a very gross definition of it. But I think it's funny that whenever, it used to be because this game isn't in print in this form anymore. Um, but it used to be that people would say, well, what in the world does Adolf Verflichtet mean? And people would say, oh, well, it means noblesse oblige, as if that answers it. But this one, the Spiel des Jahres in 1990, and our friends Susan and Larry gave it to us, as I recall. And we played it to the point that we wore it out. We wore out the cards. In fact, I think I ended up buying another set of cards, and we have put some wear on those, too. But it's a game, basically, I, I'm not gonna, I mean, I've pulled it out to look at it myself and I'm not gonna show you because it's a bunch of pieces, cards and a board. But this is a game basically of rock, paper, scissors where you decide secretly what you're going to do and then everybody reveals what they're doing at the same time and then certain actions take place that involve some interactions between players and some interactions between players and the game itself. And the object of the game is to amass collections of valuable artifacts. And somehow you end up with the, somehow you win if you have the certain sets completed. I actually can't remember because we, I mean, 1990, may I point that out? It is 32 years ago. 
that is, it's hard for me to imagine that I was an adult 32 years ago, but in fact, I was 32, 32 years ago. So that's a little shocking as well. Anyway, this game is a great game. Now I'm bringing this up even though it's out of print, which may seem cruel, except that I know that you can get it for a reasonable price on eBay. Also, it was re-released in the early 2000s, I think, under the name Hoity Toity, and it's the same game, but Noblesse, I mean, Adolf Reflected and Hoity Toity do not mean the same thing. Uh, so, anyway, I never needed, I never bought the, the game Hoity Toity or needed to because I have Adolf Reflected, the original. Um, so it's possible also to get this game that way. And the things that I, that we liked about this game, one of them is it has nearly simultaneous turns. So you're not waiting for somebody to decide what they're going to do. And that is a real challenge with games, I think, especially if you have a mixed group of people, some of whom are really experienced at games and some of whom are not as experienced, or you have adults and children. It's a challenge to wait for someone else's turn, or if you have a large group. I think this game is for one to, from two to five players, yeah. So, anyway, that's a game I would recommend. Now that led me to think of this game, which I'm certain I've mentioned before, Ink and Gold. And this is another game where you simultaneous, you secretly decide what you're going to do, and then you simultaneously reveal what you're going to do. And in this one, you know, there's five rounds, which are represented by five sections of that temple that you see pictured here, that Incan temple. And you're trying to collect gems and artifacts, which have value, and be at the end of the five rounds to have the most value in gems and artifacts. That's what that game is about. Again, it's a, I mean, my husband calls it a, do I stay or do I go game? I guess that's a song, he said. He said it's a song. I don't know. I'm not into popular music. And so if Bach didn't write it or Beethoven said it as an art song, then I probably don't know it. Um, but again, this is an advantage because there's most of the game is simultaneous turns. So you're not waiting for one player or for all the other players before it gets back around to you to make a decision. And there's risk. What you're doing as you decide if you're going to stay or go is you're deciding whether you're going to risk what you've already collected by going farther in or whether you um, are not going to take that chance and you're just going to leave with your booty secure in your backpack, which hopefully doesn't have a black interior or you might misplace something. So anyway, that is the... That's that game. It's a very, it's an easy enough game to, for people to understand that it's a good game to introduce to folks who don't know the game. It's easy. It's a good after dinner game uh, type game. So along the lines of the risk taking, again, I have definitely mentioned this game before because this is a Williams family. If you come here to dinner or for an event more than once, you probably will play this game. Certainly that was true up until five years ago. Now this is not, this is a turn-taking game, but it, the turns are pretty quick. They can be very quick. It's a, do I decide to risk taking another roll of the dice or do I bank my winning so far kind of game? And it's fun and pretty quick. And I've mentioned that game recently but Incan Gold put me in mind to the Incan Temple thing and this game, Tikal. You hear the pieces rattling in here. Um, this, I'll show you the back of it because it's a good image of the game. In this game, everybody starts down here at the um, base camp area. And as you go, these hexagonal tiles are turned over and you discover what's on the other side. And the, what you are discovering is temples and artifacts and gold pieces. And the object of the game is by the end of the game to have the most value in those things. And this is, um, 
two to four players. It says ages 10 to 99. Um, this was, one, I think, possibly the first family strategy game that we played that was sort of a location discovery style game. Since then, we've played several other location-based games, which I will um, talk about at some other time. But we played this a lot when our son was young, and he enjoyed it, and he is one of the ones who's impatient about other people's turns. So it is a turn-taking game, but it's not... Um, it, I don't recall, we haven't played it in a few years, but I don't recall it being a difficult game. And it's, you know, kind of interesting and you're, as you turn over the next hex to see what, to, what is ahead of you as you are exploring, you um, are excited to see, oh, it's a temple or, oh, it's some gold or gems. I think it has gems in it. Anyway, that's another interesting game. Um, I've put in the description box the name of these games, the names of these games, and their publishers. Um, the only game that I'm pretty sure you can't get now is Aldo Verflichte, or Hoity Toity, its other name. Except that you can get it on eBay or sec the secondary market, as, as it's called. The other games, I'm pretty sure, are currently available games. Now, not all of them from Amazon. For instance, Fill or Bust, um, I can't find on Amazon. In fact, Ink and Gold, I'm not sure I could find on Amazon. But anyway, there it is, some more games. Now, a couple of other little updates. I'm going to make a video um, the next two weeks. The third week, two weeks from today, so I'll, no, three weeks from today, thank goodness, is the Friday after Thanksgiving, and I will not be making a video that day, I'm pretty sure. I either will be traveling back from my brother-in-law's, uh, where we are going to spend Thanksgiving, or our son and daughter-in-law will be here, um, or we'll be decorating for Christmas, or something like that. But in any case, that particular holiday week, I will not make a video, at least a full length video. Who knows, maybe I will make a short. Um, the following week is the first Friday in December and I will have been gone, not cross-stitching, a total of five days of those two weeks, which means it will be a one week's worth of cross-stitch type stuff. But I will have started to open Jenny's Countdown to Christmas box. And I will have started to work on the Modern Folk Embroidery, Evertote, Leon Roxy, um, Advent Stitch Long, Mystery Stitch Long. So those two things will be new and I will show you. I will show them to you. I'm not sure in the month of December whether I will do any other cross-stitch other than that Advent project, just because I want to give it my attention. And if I have finished the purple sampler by then, I'll feel good about setting that aside. I don't intend to start a Winter Rose Manor until January. The other things I might pick up from time to time as something to do. Eliza Stringer, age six. Yeah, maybe I'd work on that. Uh, it sort of depends on whether I settle on whether I'm gonna just reproduce it as it's charted or whether that is with that particular verse from First John or whether I am going to put something else there, which case I'll have to chart it, see if I can make it fit. So that is this week's video. I thank you very much for joining me. I've had, a, again, a couple new subscribers, which I hope you feel very welcome. I, we had a great time last weekend in Atlanta, uh, seeing our nephew play football and visiting some friends on the way home from there. We've had beautiful weather, and I had a fire the other night out on the deck. A friend of ours gave me some more firewood that fits in that um, 
solo stove fire pit uh, because of the size we have it takes smaller wood shorter wood I should say um, anyway it's just been it's been a wonderful several days and I hope that you have had a good several days and I hope that whatever you're about to embark on this afternoon evening weekend whether it's uh, blackbird stitching or raking leaves or sitting around the fire in your neighbor's yard enjoying some friendship and fellowship, whatever it is, I hope that you enjoy it. Many blessings to you, friends.